Welcome back to the Junior Dev. Do you feel like you're torturing yourself just to be a wagey again? I think a lot of us, when we're beginning our journey, right? When we're beginning our developer journey, we go through a lot of things. Like we learn algorithms, then we kind of have to learn like what the recruiter's looking for. But what the recruiter is looking for is not exactly what the senior developer that you're going to be working under is looking for. In order to make it past these interviews, in order to do all of these things, it takes branding. And when you brand yourself, you realize something that I don't think is really obvious to people when they're going through their process of branding. And that is, they need you. You don't necessarily need them. Now, when you're actually branding, that actually equals real money. And you'll be like, Shaston, but like, what do you mean by that? Well, here's the thing. When you actually brand, that brand is worth money. Of course, you can't just write a, ch a blank check on that brand and then just go to the bank and hope that it goes through. That's not how it works. And if you're investing in that brand, in order to get a wagey position, you're going to kind of like feel a little cheated out of some of the money that could have just naturally been yours, I think. Now, if you're like 21, 22 years old, take it from somebody who's 50 years old, okay? People don't see the value in branding. This kind of ties back into just having overall experience. If you're 21, 22 years old, things like branding probably tend to get overlooked. But honestly, I would encourage you to start thinking about your branding. So an ideal wagey position for me would probably be working for open source or working for some startup company or something like this. But this idea that I'm just like wanting to like sell out all my values just to go work for Google or Microsoft or whatever. Yeah, not so much. In corporate America, I don't feel like it's about competence. I think it's more about how people can climb up the corporate ladder, you know, how close they follow the politics of the corporation, and all of this other nonsense. And it's not about, hey, how good of a coder are you? How good are you at solving problems? Can you just kind of disappear in and be out of sight, out of mind and not be involved in the politics and not be, you know, bothered with any of that stuff? You just clock in, clock out. You talk to people if you need to or want to and just kind of stay out of sight, out of mind and don't get involved in any of the drama and all of these things is are those things possible today i don't see that as being an option i don't see like if you're not wanting to climb the corporate ladder that you'll get anywhere and in fact you'll probably be subject to wrongful terminations you'll be subject to slander you'll be overlooked for promotions that you should be the one getting and it's really funny to me because everybody wants to sit there and claim the corporate ladder and hopefully I'll get this position that makes, you know, $300,000 a year. And, but the fact of the matter is I want my freedom because I know that if I, they pay me $300,000 a year, I have no freedom. That's a reality that most people should understand. Now, if that's all you want to do is be a wagey, you go to work, you work your 8 to 10 hours or 12 hours a day, you clock off, you go home, you get paid. Maybe you get that job at Google or Microsoft or Facebook. That's great. Would I work for Google for two, three, four hundred thousand dollars a year? You're be you bet your ass I would. But what would I do next? I would position myself to where in the future... I didn't have to be a wagey. So if I worked for Google, this is exactly what I would do. In fact, I would just take a chapter out of Tech Lead's book. Because he actually is doing a lot of what I would be doing. Now, I've called him out in the past because he's a little disingenuous on his channel. But make no mistake about it. 
he's got the right idea. If I got hired by Google, I would be looking into quadrupling my money. I would be looking to position myself that when I left that company after three or four years or two years or whatever it was, I didn't have to rush back into trying to find a job. And in fact, I would be looking for a remote position so I didn't have to leave my home. And there was all these other things that I would be doing in order to position myself not to be the typical wagey. And I'd probably surround myself with a lot of other options that working at a company like Google would afford me. And I would be in a really good position. So you're preparing for all of this. Are, are you thinking about what you're going to do with your money? You know, I, I've seen professional athletes go broke. In the NFL, for example, there's kind of a mentorship where they teach you how to manage your money. But before that, athletes were going broke. Because here's the here are these people who could play football and they made all this money, but they didn't know how to manage that money because that money is going to run out. So this whole concept of the wagey model or the career model started about 80 years ago where someone would go to work for 40 years to the same company and then be able to retire with a, enough of a nest egg to basically sit on his front porch every night and not have to really worry too much about money. He could live the rest of his life out in dignity, and that's a pretty good life. And that model, unfortunately, is no longer a reality. But before that, this is something that a lot of us kind of aspired to. And so when we become software developers, it's kind of like going back in time to when that was possible. But unfortunately, the last 40 years have proved that the whole career retirement model is just not a reality anymore. Now, I think it's quite common in tech that every couple of years you bounce from company to company. That seems to be kind of the status quo. And so you're not really dependent on the man, you're dependent on your brand. It's really funny because a lot of people are looking at this like we looked at careers before. The only difference is, is every couple of years you're bouncing on to greener grass. I'm not sure that that's the model you should be trying to chase if you're already cultivating this brand that you've made for yourself. Looking towards having freedom being able to work from home, being able to be around your family and spend time with them, being able to go on lavish vacations and not worry about going broke. I mean, there's all kinds of things that this could afford you if you play your cards right. So as somebody who's already worked for 30 years and had like all these really awesome odd jobs and kind of lived it up most of my life, I'm not looking forward to climbing that corporate ladder, but I would be stupid. I mean, literally stupid not to accept a job from one of those corporations. I'd be really stupid because of the money that you can make. I just don't think you want to stay there. 